In this lesson, I'm going to show you how the dimensions, the guides and the rulers work in the program. I've created a file previously, so I'll come up here and I'll open that up. And you can see it's just a standard type road sign here. Now, dimensions and rulers are available on the left-hand flyout here. As you can see, we've got the guides and the dimensions and some quick guides and some auto dimensions and some of our display options. So this is where we find these dimensions and guide tools. Obviously our rulers are on the, along the edge here, which you can switch on and off by coming down here, clicking on this button here, and you can turn them on and off. Now you'll also notice up here under page options, so when I'm in object mode and I have nothing selected, I get all these page options here. And some of these options include dimensions and guides and the rulers as well, which you can also switch on and off here. Now the dimensions at the moment are switched off. I'll switch those on. And we can see here some dimensions I've made earlier. Now these dimensions can either work as floating dimensions or they can be fixed to an object. So if I select this outside border here and I come down over to this flyout, this dimensions flyout, I go to auto dimension and I go to height. You can see it tells us that the size of the boundary of this item here, this object, or in the stop sign here is 20 inches. Now if I select on that edge there and I make that bigger, you can see how this grows in size here because it's a auto dimension and it's locked onto this particular object here. So as I resize it, my dimension resizes and tells me what's going on. So just undo that. Now you'll also notice that the dimensions are in a fairly large font here and that can be handy or it can be annoying depending on what you're doing. So what we've done is if you click on this flyout here and go to auto dimension, uh, display options, you'll see point size. And as I make this smaller, you'll see all the point sizes changing. And now they're much smaller than what they were a moment ago. I can also change the font. And we'll give you a good list of fonts here. Uh, you know, and you can just change these fonts as you need to, depending on what the application is and what you're trying to achieve. I tend to leave it on Trebuchet. You can also change things like the font color. Uh, and you can change the, even the dimension color. So you've got quite a lot of control here. You can change the line thickness as you can see and you can even change things like the uh, end caps. So you can go for mighty big ones or uh, very tiny ones. So you have lots of options here. So we'll just set that back to say some default sorts of uh, colors here. We'll just black and black is fine. Okay, so that's an auto dimension and that's how the dimensions resize and change their end caps, etc. If I wanted to measure this, this word here, stop, I've got the O, which I'll zoom into this. You'll see here how the O extends past the, the top of the P and uh, the bottom of the T here. So if I select on this, another type of uh, dimension I've got, if I slide out, is this one here, which is just a, a vertical dimension. And I can actually manually draw this out, as you can see, like that. If I click on this uh, node here, I can then drag it to my left hand side and I can also drag out its length. So you've got control about how you can actually set your, uh, your dimensions. Now if I click on this button here, go to my display options, which not only are they here, but there are some up here as well, up the top here. I'll bring my line thickness right down to say, I'll type in 0 0.5 points, so I'll make it quite thin. And if I zoom in here, you'll see that I can now select this dimension here and I can drag it up to the top of the O here and it will actually, if I hold it right at the top, it'll actually lock onto the top of the O and come down and it will lock onto the bottom of the O just there. Oops, sorry, just right on the bottom. You can see it locking onto the O there. And if I zoom out a little like this, you can see it's now telling me the top of the O is 6.891 inches. Okay, now if I click off that and I go to metric, and zoom out, you'll see how it all updates itself into metric, which is really quite a handy thing. Zoom back in, select inches, whoops, and it's back to inches now. Okay, and the same thing goes, if I wanted to measure the P, I could zoom in a little bit closer, go to object mode, select the dimension, drag it down, clock on, oh, snap onto the P, go here and snap onto the P at the bottom there, right there. And it will now tell, tell us that the, the height of the P is 6.644 inches. So these are handy tools to be able to, uh, to measure things with. And these will also print out and uh, on your um, on, a, on a, like a proof of this particular job here. So that's generally how dimensions work. 
Now if I come up here and I switch those dimensions off just quickly and we go to guides I'll turn those on you'll see I've designed it well I've placed a couple of guides earlier now guides are very easily put onto the uh, drawing area you simply come over to the ruler and you'll see the eye, uh, the cursor change you left click you drag out and you place the guide wherever you'd like to put it you can get, do that from the top as well just click drag down and drag out a guide and again you can change the actual um, the position of the guide and the and the actual information about the guide so let's say I want to set that guide at say six inches from the left hand side I type in six and click enter and you can see now it's set at six inches from the top uh, from the left hand side across if I want to say set this one at six inches so I'm going to set this down from this origin point down to there to six inches I just type in six and you can see it lines up there so I've got six inches and six inches no problems now if I want to change my guides uh, to a different uh, to a different look I can come out to this flyout go to display and I can change the guide color to say uh, red and as you can see they update to red if I click on this again I can change it from a solid to say a dashed or say a dotted so I have control over the way I look my guides look and what color they are and again they'll also print out with um, uh, with the proof of this job when I print it out as an option in the printout uh, now if I wanted to fit say this I'll just select the whole thing here if I wanted to fit this to say this position simply click on this and you'll see that it snaps in and it's positioned according to those guides if I want to get rid of guides I just click on one like this I can either go up to the rubbish bin click on that or I can go down here and I can click delete on my keyboard and the guide is removed there's also a different type of guide which is what we call a local guide now the idea of that is, is that it actually fits or locks into a particular position so up here you'll see guide uh, type and you can go to local guide and you can see how it's reporting from this anchor point across is six inches okay and same with this one if I go to local guide so local guides you can uh, change the anchor point if for example I bring the anchor point over to um, down to here and it locks into that corner there you'll see that that's 44 inches down and we know that because if I click off this you'll see the page is 50 inches if I click on this guide you'll see 44 add the 6 inches from where I brought it from 44 and 6 is 50 and that's the advantage of these uh, fixed guides you can actually set the anchor point and then move the guide away from there the distance you want and you can do that by simply selecting on it you've got the anchor point which you can put anywhere you like and I could say set that at 50 inches and you'll see it, is, it goes up to there which is the page size so that's a general rundown of guides you've also got more tools up here you can you can actually um, uh, change the anchor point and you can uh, link guides to objects there's a lot of things you can do these these sorts of more technical things are covered in the manual um, uh, and they're fairly easy to follow and they're very handy tools to have and be able to access if you need them to turn a local guide back to a standard guide you simply just check on this uh, drop down standard guide go to this drop down standard guide and of course again you can turn your guides off as simple as that when it comes to rulers the rulers in Vinyl Master are pretty good as well because they actually slide down so if I grab this gripper up here and slide it I can actually position my ruler say to there and there's a gripper down here and I can position my ruler down to there okay so I can actually move my rulers around the nice thing you'll notice about rulers is if I select this here they're actually see-through so they're transparent so they don't really get in your way as I move my mouse around you can see these little blue lines they're telling me at what position it is and if I go down here it's also reported down there so there's a lot of information available to you so you can see what's going on uh, by simply just looking around the screen here in these sorts of areas I can also set the origin point by clicking on the reposition the, the ruler origin here just left click and I drag that anywhere I like and I can make the origin say for example by just snapping to the page like this down the bottom here so I can have my zero zero origin from here and then when I measure things they'll measure from this point outwards as you can see here and I can actually change my origin position here as well so there's some very powerful tools here uh, for positioning your X and Y coordinates um, and the way you're measuring your objects some people like to have their origin point in the bottom left hand corner like this and work upwards rather than downwards so you get these sorts of options in Vinyl Master and that's uh, Dimensions, Guides and Rulers. That's the end of this lesson.